Hi, Laird Lamperts here with you, agronomist with Mature Seed Services out of Domain, Manitoba. And this morning, we're standing directly south of the yard in 17 acres of corn plots. Now within this field, we have the corn plots broken down into two different main trials. The first trial is the Petura variety evaluation trial, where we have 15 different varieties in half acre plots. Um, they are 370 feet long and 24 rows wide. The second trial we have going on is the Pride Seeds uh, new experimental trial. Um, that involves 14 different varieties, uh, four rows wide and 400 feet long. Uh, within this trial, we have existing varieties that are out in the marketplace and varieties are potentially bringing out to the marketplace. We seeded these trials on May 2nd and May 3rd uh, into almost ideal moisture conditions. The average soil temperature was 5 to 8 degrees Celsius and we were about an inch and a half deep. The corn plots emerged, I would say, two weeks to 16 days after being in the ground. Uh, within those 14 days, we were very, very dry. Um, since then, uh, the closer to the end of May, is when our rain season started. And since then, we've had probably about six to six and a half inches um, in the last month. Uh, it is June 20th today, and the corn plots are starting to, uh, to look quite well after they're coming out of all the moisture stress. We're getting the longest days of the year here, so uh, the potential is still quite strong. We seeded them with a John Deere uh, box style planter, it was a model 7200 uh, on 30 inch rows. A couple things that I think are important uh, for growers to be out there in their field and keep an eye on uh, as your corn plots emerge. Now ideally we would do this a little bit early, earlier in the year, uh, but nonetheless we're out here now. Uh, so the first one would be the plant counts, uh, your plant population, making sure what you're seeding is actually emerging. Uh, the second would be the distribution of the seed and the evenness of it. And the third would be the crucial weed free period uh, that we like to see in uncompetitive crops like corn. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll have some corn agronomy updates throughout the year as they progress. Uh, so what's the easiest way to check your plant population? Uh, probably the most common way would be to take a rope, measure out 17 and a half feet. Uh, in this case, I've got an extension cord here. Uh, lay it down in between two rows and count the number of plants within that 17 and a half feet. Uh, on my right, I've counted them previous here, we had 30 plants, and on my left, we had 28 plants. Um, take the average of that, so that's 29 at a factor of 1,000. We have 29,000 plants per acre in these two rows here. So typically, uh, in Western Canada, uh, producers have targeted either 26,000 to 32,000 plants an acre. Uh, but now with some of the new corn varieties coming out, yield is being maximized uh, and pushed just a little more. Uh, guys are also pushing their plant population, uh, somewhere usually from 30,000 to 35,000 uh, is what guys are finding maximizing yield with. So another quick way to uh, check your CD mortality is by simply measuring the distance between each plant and taking that average number. Uh, there's all kinds of charts, you can just Google them and pull up based on your spacing, based on the distance between the plants, what your plant population is if you don't have a rope with you uh, or something quick. So we'll change our camera angle here and uh, take the average width between plants. Average spacing down here be six inches, this one would be about seven, this one would be five, six, five so roughly i believe the average uh spacing between those plants would be about five and a half inches so based on a spreadsheet uh you can go and find on google uh, i know that in this small section here that if uh, the rest of the acre had spacings of this i'd have a po plant population of about thirty-two thousand plants an acre um, so something just to keep in the back of your mind when you're out there walking through your fields so the other important thing to keep an eye on is the staging. So crop being uncompetitive as it is, you want everything to emerge evenly and stay even throughout the year. Uh, because if you have just one flush of corn that's uh, anywhere from five to seven days later than the, the original flush, uh, you can actually have a, quite a potential yield drag because that one plant is gonna compete for light, moisture, nutrients, but yet at the end of the year not produce a cob. And, uh, and it can actually 
severely decrease yield. Uh, so we'll uh, go through quickly just staging these plants. Uh, so what you want to do and what the most common way is to look for count collars on the plant. Um, so in this case we have one, two, three, four developed collars. So that'd be considered a V4 corn. Uh, despite the fact that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and, and almost nine leaves. Uh, but every stage of vegetative stage is a collar. So count the collars. So we'll count this the next plant to make sure it's within the same uh, stage. One, two, three, four. This collar isn't quite developed, if you can see there. Uh, so it would be late, late V3 stage, early V4 stage. Uh, so I did mark, as these corn plots emerged, uh, three plants that were all side by side. That one emerged seven days earlier, the other one emerged seven days after the origin, original, and then a third plant which was probably 10 to 12 days later than the original plant. So we're going to keep an eye on those, take those three plants to harvest and hand harvest them and just see what the yield drag was between the second plant that was seven days later and the third plant that was 10 to 12 days later. We'll head over there now. Uh, one of the flag tests uh, that I marked earlier about a month ago, uh, this corn is a little bit further behind than uh, we originally looked at. We're actually just on the edge of a wet hole uh, where this soil sat uh, completely saturated and not standing water uh, for close to three weeks. So we're finally just drying out. It's the first time we've been out here uh, without getting mud on the boots. Uh, so I marked these. This was the plant that was out first. This was seven days after this plant. And then this was another uh, 12 days behind the original plant. Um, so based on some research in Western Canada, based on our climate, if 17% of the field has an uneven emergence of just two leaves, so in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight leaves, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six leaves, um, so a difference of two leaves, we're going to have a 4% yield drag on this plant in comparison to this plant. If we have uh, a four leaf difference, so comparing this original plant to this plant that was 10 to 12 days later, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six leaves uh, in comparison to, to I guess there are nine, uh, if I count this one here that's just coming out. Um, so this plant is probably gonna have an 8% yield drag according to this research. Uh, so we're gonna take these to yield. I've got two other flag tests going on. Uh, we'll take the average of that and see what kind of yield drag we have based on uneven emergence. Look at this corn row here. Uh, what we have going on is a lot of competition. We have one big volunteer canola a little farther down. We have some hemp nettle uh, competing against our corn. So when is the weed free critical period? Well, it's right from emergence. So in our case, it was May 16th to 18th was when our corn emerged all the way up to about V10. So we'll be into the first or second week of July uh, by the time the corn is uh, is waist tall and being able to actually compete against weeds. So we applied a heat and glyphosate pre-emergent application to this field um, about May 14th, I believe it was. So the field was nice and clean. Haven't been able to get back in with a sprayer since then. Until today, we'll get in here uh, and take care of these uh, weeds. So little interesting note, I counted the, if you back here, the corn leaves on this plant is seven, while farther down the row is eight to nine, and even on this one plant here in front of the volunteer canola uh, has eight leaves while the rest have nine. Uh, so it just goes to show how one weed uh, can hold back one corn plant. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the first ever uh, Petura Seeds corn agronomy update video. We'll be putting more out as the summer progresses and as the corn grows. Uh, we're going to be taking all these plots to harvest, as I mentioned earlier, and we'll have that yield data ready for you uh, as the fall time rolls around and you're looking to book your seat. Thank you.